The New York Mets have retooled their roster for the 2023 season. But is this team complete, and what do they still have left to do? Let's talk about it. Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watsu K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. If you enjoy what you're watching, if you would do a fellow guy a favor, please take the time and click on that thumbs up. Let me know that you like this content. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Again, my goal is to get to 400 subscribers by the end of December. It's still possible. It could still happen, but I need some help. So if you please share with a friend, I'd appreciate it very much. All right, let's talk a little bit about the New York Mets. Now, I haven't done a Mets video since the Mets made some pretty significant moves. They re-signed Brandon Nimmo to an eight-year contract, $162 million in all. They signed David Robertson to the bullpen. They signed Kodai Senga to their starting rotation. So I want to briefly talk about those three moves. Now, as far as Nimmo goes... This is a move that I think a lot of Mets fans were thinking was probably not going to happen. Nimmo was the second most coveted free agent outfielder on the market, only after Aaron Judge. And further than that, very few center fielders, legit center fielders, were on the market as well. And we've seen Nimmo, year by year, turn himself into a better and better defensive ball player. We already know he can get on base, and he has a little burst of power, and he can run pretty well. And for me, by the way, a lot of people talk about the speed of stolen bases. To me, it's not about the stolen base. To me, if you're on second base, for instance, and a ball gets hit into left center field like a solid ground ball, can you score from second base? Okay, and Nimmo has consistently shown that he can do that. You know, not seeing the station-to-station -station baseball. That's something that's very important, and I'm all about speed in baseball, and Nimmo provides that. But here is a stat that just really amazed me when I when I found this out. So there are only five players over the last three years who have a higher on-base percentage than Brandon Nemo. Only five. Who are those five? Five guys named Juan Soto, Freddie Freeman, Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge, and Paul Goldschmidt. Number six on that list is Brandon Nemo. Okay. And what can you say? He has been remarkable, and this gives the Mets more flexibility in the outfield, or they can maintain their flexibility. It means you could keep Mark Hanna in left field, keep Starling Marte in right field. But as far as the other signings go, uh, David Robertson, to me, was the much-needed setup man. And he gets a one-year $10 million contract. So basically, the Mets gave David Robertson the same exact contract as they gave Adam Ottavino for 2022. So that was pretty straightforward. Now, last year, pitching for the Cubs and the Phillies, you know, two of my favorite teams in the world, Robertson struck out nearly a third of the batters he faced, even at 38 years old, resulting in a 2.4 ERA. And then in the playoffs, in eight appearances, Robertson's ERA was just 1.17. He's a big reason why the Phillies made it all the way to the World Series in a year where nobody expected that to happen, especially after the first couple of months of the season. Okay, and Kodai Senga, you know how I feel about him. I've recorded videos about him before, but I am thrilled the Mets got him. You know, once I heard that he wanted a big market, he wanted a contender, I just had a strong feeling it would be the Mets because the Cubs, let's be honest, are no contender right now. They're just not. They got the market. They don't have the talent. And the Padres, that was my concern. But, you know, and also I've heard that Kodai Senga and Yu Darvish are very good friends. So once I heard the Padres' name, I was pretty concerned that the Mets might lose out on him. And then if they did, then to me the best option was to go to Chris Bassett, to pivot back to Chris Bassett. Well, Bassett winds up getting three years, $63 million from Toronto. That's $21 million a year guaranteed. Senga got just $15 million a year. Five years, $15 million a year, and he's four years younger than Bassett. So all, this, all these players that the Mets are supposedly losing, you know, the money they lost, that they were going to pay Jacob deGrom, that went to sign these other players, you know, because they didn't have to give all the long-term money to deGrom. They just gave two years to Justin Verlander, possibly three. So 
I really think that the Mets are being smart with their money while spending a lot, and it's pretty hard to ride that line of balance. So what is still left? Well, if we go through this current roster, this is what I'm thinking, all right? If we're looking at what the lineup would look like, you'd have against righties, I would see Brandon Nimmo leading off center field, then Starling Marte. I like Jeff McNeil batting third, okay? I love the zombie's percentage, his ability to hit. To me, I don't want him in the five or six spot anymore. I want him in a top three role in front of Pete Alonso. So to me, if I had it my way, especially against righties, McNeil is my three hitter. Then you have Pete Alonso. Then you have Francisco Lindor. So you have a very good hitter protecting Alonso. I think that is the best way to do it. Then Daniel Vogelback would be hitting six in my lineup. Then Mark Hanna. And then the two kids, Brett Beatty at third base and Francisco Alvarez at catcher. Okay, so, and the only real change I think I would make against lefties is I would insert Eduardo Escobar in a third base, uh, Sid Beatty, and maybe you could put Alvarez at the DH spot while Thomas Nito catches. So against the lefties, I'd go Nimmo, Marte, McNeil, Alonzo, Lindor. So the same first five. And then I'd go Escobar, Mark Hanna, so he's in the seventh spot in both situations, then Alvarez, and then Nito. Uh, I don't know if James McCann will still be on this roster, but the less that he is on the field, the better. Great guy, terrible player. So when I look at this roster, then we go to the bench. You have whoever the other catcher is, Nito, McCann, whatever it might be. You have Luis Guillorme, very good infielder. Uh, vocal back when you're facing a lefty, he's on the bench. Then you have, who else do you have? Darren Ruff, Mark Vientos. This bench is what needs help. A lot of people were talking about Carlos Correa and the Mets are in the running to sign Carlos Correa. It was not what I wanted to see. To me, I want to see a good, solid veteran, especially in the outfield, who can play some center field. I don't want Starling Marte to necessarily be my backup center fielder. So if you look at some of the names who are out there, particularly a right-handed bat, I think the Mets need a right-handed bat. You know, if you do that, then it gives you a better opportunity to replace Ruff. You don't have to rush a Mark Vientos or a Ronnie Mauricio if they're not ready. I just believe in Alvarez and Beatty to the point where I think they deserve the opportunity now. But some of the free agents that are out there, to me, the best fit is Adam Duvall. Right-handed hitter, plays any outfield position. He's got three 30 home run seasons in his career. I would like to see the Mets try to get Duvall. If that doesn't work, then you can look at a Brandon Jury, bringing him back, 28 home runs last year. Trey Mancini, I like him. A.J. Pollock, that's an interesting one to me. He's had a lot of injury issues, but he still has shown glimpses that he's a very capable player. With the Dodgers in 2021, he batted 297, 21 home runs. Last year with the White Sox, not so good. Just a 245 average, although that whole White Sox season was just a, it was a complete mess anyway. Uh, 14 home runs still. To me, Pollock is a very good fourth or fifth outfielder, but his talent is better than that. It really is. It's just about his health. That seems to be the biggest issue, and at this point, age as well. But I think Pollock would be a very good fit on the Mets. Also, Justin Turner's out there, but again, I want more of an outfielder at this point. Michael Conforto, I just don't think a reunion's in the cards. I think if I'm Conforto, I'm going to a place where I know I have a chance to start. Because with the Mets right now, he's not he would be assured of anything in that starting lineup. He would probably get a couple of chances to play per week. But when you have Canna, you have Nimmo, and you have Marte, after coming off an injury plague season where you didn't even step on the field, how much playing time can you really expect? You know, if you resign with the Mets if you're Michael Conforto. Okay? So to me, one more solid piece for the bench is much, much needed. Now, as far as the pitching staff goes, well, your your five-man rotation is set right now. Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer, Kodai Senga, Jose Quintana, and Carlos Carrasco. And then for depth, if you need it, you have David Peterson. You have Joey Lucchese. You have Tyler McGill if you need to do that. Now, for me, I would put McGill into the bullpen. I'm hoping that my ease his workload. It might make him a little less prone to injuries. Peterson, to me, needs to be a starter no matter what. I don't want to see him out of the bullpen unless we're talking about the playoffs. 
But during the regular season, he proved he's a much better starter than reliever. Lucchese might be a swing man in the bullpen. You could possibly use him in that role if he earns a spot. But to me, I put McGill in the bullpen. So if you do that, in the pen, you would have uh, locked up Edwin Diaz, David Robertson, Drew Smith, Brooks Raley, who they acquired in the trade from Tampa. All right, and then to me, you throw McGill in as well. At that point, you've got five spots locked in, and you really need probably three more, three more spots. I think Alicia Hernandez and Lucchese, one of them will have that long man role. Okay, Hernandez was acquired from the Marlins in a trade this offseason. But then you've got guys like Jeff Brigham, who came over from the Marlins. John Curtis, who the Mets signed a year ago while he was hurt, but it was with the intentions of him having a role in this bullpen. Uh, also, Zach Green, who they got from the Yankees in the Rule 5 draft. Uh, Tommy Hunter, Stephen Ridings, Sean Reed Foley, William Woods. Uh, then you have a couple of guys who don't have options, like a Stephen Nagasek or a Yoan Lopez. Uh, maybe Nagasek has a role in this pen. So to me, I like having maybe two spots open, and whoever gets the spots gets the spots. But I can see where this bullpen could use one more solid veteran arm. Uh, maybe out of the left side, that'd be Andrew Chafin. It feels like the Mets and Chafin have been linked together for two or three years. It's just never quite worked out. Uh, I think Chafin's probably looking for a multi-year deal. If I'm the Mets, I would really consider giving it to him. But you don't have to because Rayleigh is your primary uh, left-handed pitcher out of the bullpen now. And from the right side, a couple guys I like, uh, Michael Fulmer, the Mets' former prospect, who they traded way back when for Ioannis Cespedes. You could go to Archie Bradley. Uh, you could bring back Michael Givens if you really want to. It probably wouldn't cost a whole lot of money, but the fact that the Mets could have kept him and chose not to tells me that's not likely happening. I don't know about Trevor May or Adam Adovino returning to this team. Uh, to me, it doesn't seem likely. But really, just one more arm for the pen, one more solid player for the bench, and I think the depth on this team will be much, much improved. So I guess one other thing that we could talk about, and this is just an idea. I've heard it bantered about a little bit. What if the Mets tried a six-man rotation with Verlander, Scherzer, Quintana, Sengai, Carrasco, and then whoever else you want. Maybe I probably Peterson is who I would use. Now, why would they do that? Well, you've got two pitchers, great pitchers, but let's be honest, are rather old at this point in Scherzer and Verlander. You need them fresh for September and October. Clearly, Scherzer was not at his best by the end of the season, despite missing uh, a quarter of the season with an injury uh, during the springtime. So that's one advantage. Also, Sengai is used to pitching one time per week in Japan. By doing this, it eases his load a little bit. And when you have this many good starters, not as many good relievers, and they're not pitching as often, you can pitch them a seventh inning instead of having to take them out in six innings. So then that kind of balances your, your whole pitching staff out a little bit because you're extending your starters a little bit longer so you're not burning out your, your bullpen uh, as much. They, they don't have to pitch as many uh, innings necessarily. And like I said earlier, David Peterson's just a better starting pitcher than he is a relief pitcher. So I'm not saying I would do it, but if the Mets don't improve this bullpen, if there are question marks about this bullpen, still this many question marks where they only have maybe two, three guys you could really trust, I think going to the six-man rotation is a worthwhile consideration. I really do. Well, those are some of my thoughts on the Mets. Let me know your thoughts. Who's your, who's your favorite signing? That the Mets have had. For me, I'm just glad they kept Edwin Diaz. I did not want to lose Edwin Diaz. There was nobody who could ever replace him in my mind. To me, he's just, it's so cool to see the way Mets fans have embraced him uh, after, you know, one horrible year and two years where that were still not uh, what Mets fans were hoping for. So the fact that he's being embraced the way that he is now, it just, I'm really happy to see uh, Mets fans doing that. So, hey, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you back here with more content from you know where, the Wicker Chair.